talk about the Padres and the Giants as the rubber game of this series. The Giants uh, won the opener one nothing, but the Padres bounced back last night with the victory, and the Padres are a dollar sixty five home favorite today. Eight and a half is the total. A lot of money coming in on the overday baseball at Petco Park. Great food options, as we well know. <laughs> Minus one twenty five towards the over in this game. And uh, it'll be a Junis against Manea in this one. Uh, guys, the San Diego Bats finally came alive last night. Um, and when I'm handicapping this game, this for me is more of a of a take against uh, Junis or however we want to pronounce uh, his name. He is basically as vanilla as it gets. This guy averages four innings per start, hasn't gone past the sixth inning one time in his 10 starts. He's not a big strikeout guy. On the flip side, uh, Manea is actually a big strikeout guy. He's got 118 strikeouts. I actually got a chance to see him pitch, and he got lit up like a Christmas tree, tree with the Dodgers. However, there weren't a lot of hard-hit balls in, this, those, in the first couple innings with that, but he, he had a lot of traffic. And uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass on that game. I think this is a good spot for the Padres. We've been talking about when is this team going to get going. Maybe last night mm. – was the night that kind of propels them and gets them going again. So I'm going to back uh, the Padres today, thinking that they're going to continue this this groove they started last night. I think everybody's just waiting for Soto and Bell and Machado to, to get it going, and we know that Tatis Jr. is going to be coming back slowly but surely. Still not crazy about this Padre team, but uh, I just think good spot here. I think they take two out of three from the Giants. Scott, some thoughts on this game? Yeah, I think it probably was a buy sign last night. You know, I mean, they going into last night's game, the Padres in their previous like 120 to 125 at bats, they had been hitting a buck 40, 140. And then last night it took a couple of innings. Soto got him started with the solo shot, I believe it was. And and then a, that Machado, by the way, that Machado extra inning homer. I mean, I just got a report about 20 minutes ago that it finally landed in San Ysidro. I mean, that, that ball, he crushed that ball. You knew it was gone from the minute he started his swing. And so maybe a little bit of a uh, of an offense waking up is what we saw last night. And now uh, Jacob Judas, as you mentioned, he doesn't eat up innings. That pin could be a bit weary uh, today for San Francisco after what happened last night. Uh, San Diego comes in. They've only won three of Anaya's last seven starts. He's he's not been good. Uh, 23 earned runs, 54 base runners allowed in his last 29 innings of work. And if you care about this stuff, he's been worse in day games. I don't know, you know, if you care about day and night, some guys just react better under the sun as opposed to under the lights. And he's been better at night, though, than he has in the afternoons. His ERA is north of five in afternoon games. And San Francisco uh, has been top 10 in metrics on the road against Southpaws over the last six weeks. So I was thinking maybe a first five innings over is how I was kind of looking at this, if that was a buy sign on the Padres' bats. Uh, Manea's second and third time through the batting order have been pretty bad, so he's got to shore that up. He usually starts well the first time through and then fades after that. But it's funny, TC, because, you know, we, we've all three been doing this for a while now. And here's the thing, man. I've been doing this for 25 years or so, and intuition becomes a part of your handicap. It has to. And I'm sure both of you guys, you know, feel the same way. Uh, you'll be sitting there looking at stats, and you'll say, oh, my gosh, this is an easy winner. And your intuition kicks in and says, yeah, I saw something in the game the night before that cancels out a few of these stats that jump out at you. So my intuition says the Friars get it done today. The stats might say, well, it's either an over or stay away from the game. But it, you got to decide which means more to you in this contest. For me, I think like UTC, it was a wake-up call last night by that offense. I think it's a buy sign, and I think the Padres get the victory. And I like the way you say that, Scott, because I wholeheartedly agree. Intuition, this is more, or as I've used the term, gut feel. Sometimes right. this is just a gut feel thing. It's intuition that, again, not big on Manea, but, yeah, this feels right that the Padres will get the W and we can go to the cashier. Jeff? Yeah, I, I think, you know, both these pitchers I don't really have much interest in. Uh, you look at Junis, obviously you kind of talked about it. Also, he doesn't go deep in games. I mean, this guy – it's very rare he'll go past the fifth inning. Uh, you're going to get a lot of San Francisco bullpen, which you know isn't very good, quite honestly. I had trouble last night yet again. Um, but I got to tell you, I mean, I don't know if I'm ready to completely buy into the punch. I think they win this game. I think you're probably on the right side here. Um, but I'll tell you what, um, this lineup is concerning. Uh, you'd hope they get going. But, you know, Hader yet again last night gets destroyed. I mean, I, 
I don't know how you can you know back this guy uh, long term or this bullpen. I, I just have some real question marks about both these teams, in particular the Padres. What the hell is going on with with Josh Hader? I mean, two thirds of an inning gets up three earned runs, three walks. I mean, something's wrong with Mister Hader. Well, here's the thing with Hader, and it cracks me up because people look at his velocity and they look at his demeanor and they think this guy is just a great closer. There's a reason why the Brewers got rid of him. I've watched Hader a lot the last three or four years with Brewer games, and this is nothing new. This guy has control issues, and there, there's a mental block or something psyche because when this guy gets in tight games, I've never seen a guy go from maybe one outing where he looks lights out to another outing where he completely just lose total control here. And uh, so for me, this isn't surprising. Brewer fans that follow this guy on a regular basis, they'll tell you, you don't know what you're going to get. But people get mesmerized with the velocity. They see a left-hander that throws flames around 100 miles an hour and think, oh, this guy's unhittable. It's not the case. And what does this guy throw mostly? Fastballs. You connect with that fastball, forget about it, and then you add on control problems on top of it. So Hader, for me, is he's not an automatic. He can be stellar at times, but like we've seen the last couple nights, which we've seen several times this year with the Brewers. So no, I'm, I've, I've, I've been saying that for a long time with, with Josh Hader. So hopefully we're not going to see Hader today because he pitched the last two nights, right? So probably get an off day. But I will take a shot with the Padres here with my intuition, my gut <laughs> feel with San Diego. And uh, I'll take the Padres. Sometimes that intuition turns out to be uh, nausea and uh, indigestion. So I'm always yeah, got to be a little careful about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Scott. After you just you know I, I, I felt good about it, now all of a sudden I want to run to the bathroom. No, right. I'm with you. I'm with you, man. I think the Padres get it done. I'm, it's not a best bet, but I'm with you on that side. 